Since the early 1900s, scientists have observed with ever-increasing evidence that Earth's climate is changing. The problem with discussing the effects of climate change on the entire world is that the Earth is way too big for any one person to fully comprehend. As such, it can be helpful to focus on a single area. Instead of trying to figure out what the Earth's climate is doing, let's look into what Dry Run Creek's climate has been doing since records began. The Dry Run Creek watershed covers a manageable area of just over 15,000 acres. This includes a bit of farmland, a bit of forest, and most of Cedar Falls. The DRC is in a temperate climate region. This just means that we experience more severe seasons than other parts of the country. These seasons are controlled by our temperature and precipitation. Over long periods of time, these weather conditions contribute to regional and global climate. By seeing how they change in a specific area over long periods of time, we understand how the climate of that region changes. So let's look a little closer at the DRC. Here, we have about four months of real warmth. We determined this by looking at every high temperature of every day of the year since we started recording data. Then, as an example, we averaged every May 1st with every other May 1st in our record and found that the average daily high temperature was above 73 degrees. For some fun trivia, the average hottest day in the Dry Run Creek is July 19th with an average high of 84 degrees. On the other side of the year, we have our cold season, which lasts about three months. We define this period in the same way, but instead of looking for days above 73 degrees, we look for days below 38 degrees. Our coldest day is January 22nd, which has an average high temperature of 27 degrees since records began. With the warm and cold seasons identified, we can move on to our wet and dry seasons. Frustratingly, these seasons don't line up exactly, but overlap with each other. Unlike before, we don't average the precipitation recorded each day. Instead, we determine the chance that any given day throughout the year is going to be a wet day. A wet day doesn't just mean rain, but rather a day in which 0.04 inches worth of water fell. We define it this way because even though snow falls super thickly, each inch of snow brings way less water than each inch of rain. The wet season lasts a little less than six months. The average chance of any given day being a wet day is about 27%. The most likely day on our calendar to be a wet day is June 15th at 43%. The dry season lasts just over six months. The likelihood of a wet day occurring on any given day during the dry season is less than 27%. The day most likely to be dry is January 22nd at 11%. So that's our year in the DRC, but what does it actually mean? Thinking about the kinds of natural disasters an area can face, the two most impacted by temperature and precipitation are floods and droughts. Both of these can cause major ecological transitions, periods after which an environment behaves differently than before. Let's look at how floods and droughts affect the Dry Run Creek. A flood occurs when the soil on either side of a river is saturated with water and unable to absorb any more liquid. As rain continues to fall, or as a pulse of water travels downstream, the water that pours over the banks of the river can't do anything but run across the ground surface, endangering property and people. In 2008, the Dry Run Creek experienced an exceptional flood. Floods are categorized by how likely they are to occur in a given year. This 2008 flood was a 500-year flood, meaning, based off our data, that a similar flood has a 0.2% chance to happen in any given year. This is about the same chance as being dealt a flush in a game of poker. This flood decimated the Dry Run Creek, as well as huge swaths of the Midwest as the storm system raged onward past our little river. This devastating flood is still affecting the health of our waterways 15 years after the water levels dropped. You see, when a flood like that hits, all the pollutants that are stored by a city aren't safe anymore. They get carried off, entering and overwhelming our stormwater sewers. These previously safely stored pollutants endanger the surrounding waterways. In part due to this and other floods, the DRC is biologically impaired, meaning it has increased settling of sediments, habitats are becoming less available, and stormwater is entering the stream too fast. Additionally, the flooding spreads around bacteria from sewer to river and river to river, 
E. coli has been an issue in the DRC for the last several years, in part due to increased flooding. But, as we saw earlier, Iowa isn't usually super wet. In fact, in the early 2010s, we experienced a three-year drought. The most intense period of this drought was 2012. In 2012, the drought in the DRC became so dry that one of our monitoring sites was showing depths less than a tenth of an inch. There had been so little rain for so long that the Dry Run Creek ran completely dry. As you can imagine, this decimated the ecosystem of the Dry Run Creek. River creatures can't live without a river after all. This drought made the river's ecosystem noticeably different even after it was replenished. So that's where we are. Dry Run Creek experiences warm and chilly seasons, which align somewhat with wet and dry seasons. The watershed is fairly dry, but usually gets replenished during the wet season. These wet seasons can sometimes bring floods, which impair our waterways. But on the flip side, the dry seasons can completely dry us out. Dry Run Creek is in a temperate climate, meaning it is volatile and under the influence of both the poles and the equator. With the added effects of climate change, the Dry Run Creek's climate will only increase in its chaotic behavior. This chaos will manifest in even more intense swinging from drought to flood. In preparation for this, local governments within and around the DRC are implementing flood mitigation methods like permeable pavements, which draw down the water faster, and river meanders, which slow down the pulse of high water, giving downstream communities more time to prepare for when a flood hits. This video was paid for by the Blackhawk County Soil and Water Conservation District with the help of these sponsors. It was made in collaboration with the University of Northern Iowa and edited by Rowan McCarthy. To view our other videos in this series, click the thumbnails on the screen now, links in the description, or visit www.blackhawkswcd.org slash dryruncreek.